in the pictures. Oh, I'll tell you what it means. It means a pitcher is a clay vessel. It was a clay vessel at that time, made out of clay, just like we are a clay vessel. And that lamp, the light of the gospel, is supposed to be inside every soul that is saved that loves Jesus Christ. Oh, and that trumpet blast. The trumpet blast is what I've been telling you this whole sermon. It's your testimony. It's your preaching. It's ministry. Not behind the pulpit, but I'm talking about everywhere. In your family, anywhere. Standing up for the Lord Jesus Christ. There's your, there is your weapon. The testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how, that's one of the ways how they overcome the enemy. It says in Revelation chapter 13, they overcome him. They overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. They love not their lives unto death. And the word of their testimony. That's the trumpet that they're blowing. And that clay vessel. Let me keep reading. So Gideon and the and the hundred, excuse me. So Gideon and the hundred men who were with him came into the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle, watched, and they had but newly set the watch. And they blew the trumpets and broke the pitchers that were in their hands. And the three companies blew the trumpets and broke the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow withal. And they cried the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Our weapons are not carnal, I said a while ago, Ephesians chapter 6, 17. They are the word of God. That is the sword of the Lord. And when we are broken, when we are finally broken from pride and arrogance, Oh, when we become humble, when this vessel is broken, the light shines forth. Amen. And when it light shines forth, guess what it does? It confounds them enemies and tears them up. Verse 21. And they stood every man in his place round about the camp. And all the hosts ran and cried and fled. And the three hundred blew the trumpets. And the Lord sent every man's sword against his fellow, even throughout all the hosts. So these 135,000 men... They were so scared of those 300 and what was happening because of the light was shining forth that they started being confused and confounded and they took each other out. That's how powerful God is and that's what He's showing us in this. Not that you fight with physical weapons. They didn't have to hit nobody. They didn't have to strike nobody. They didn't even have to kill nobody. They turned on themselves. Why? <laughs> because the Word of God is the light. Amen. And when the light comes out, darkness flees. And when the light came out, that broken picture. But the vessel had to be broken. That's the biggest problem in the church today. Oh, we want to rise up in pride. We don't want to be broken anymore. If we're not broken, we have no power in the light because it's us in the spotlight. And the flesh will die. Trust me. They will get a hold of people in the flesh. But when you are broken, amen, and you are humble, and the light of God is shining through you, that's where the power is. Amen. And it will confound them enemies that are attacking right now. The gates of hell will not prevail against the Lord's church. We are the bride of Christ, and I believe He's raising many of you up right now. Many of you that will give yourself to Him, that will humble yourself and say, Take me, Lord. I'll do whatever you want me to do. Amen. I had to get to that point. He wants to fill you with the power. Acts 1 8 says, But you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. That power is not for us to run around act like we somebody. It's to run around and be a witness for Jesus Christ. Amen. There's where your power is. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise God. Amen. But we got to get to that place. That place where we humble ourselves from our own pride, our own intellect, our own knowledge. Whatever it may be, however you were raised, whatever school you went to, Paul was a very intelligent man, was trained by the best, went to the best schools at that time. But he said, I count it all done to know Jesus, to win Him. Praise God. You've got to let all that go to be broken, no matter what it is. I was one of them macho men. I was going to do everything myself. God wasn't going to tell me nothing. My wife sure wasn't going to tell me nothing. And my kids wasn't going to tell me nothing. It was my way or the highway. That's how it was. That's how I seen it in my family. That's how I seen Daddy get control. I said, well, I'm going to get control that way too. I pulled up and did all that for years. And guess what? It didn't get me nowhere. It got me in a pit. Man, it got me in all kinds of fights. It brought hate into my house. It brought strife into my house. But when I finally got to the place where I was broken, and I said, Lord God, 
I'll do anything you want me to do. I'm nothing. Praise God, the light came out. And it healed my whole household, healed my home, and kept me from divorce. Saved me a lot of money. <laughs> I mean, come on. If more people would humble themselves instead of rising up in pride, we'd have less divorces. You know what I mean? It takes two to tango. If there was a humility there, praise God, you would come together and take responsibility for the fight. That's what he told me to do at first. Everybody said, God, don't speak to you like that. No, yes, he will, too, if you'll listen. He'll speak to your heart. Because the first thing I had to do when he called me was apologize to my 15-year-old. You know how hard it would be in my natural flesh to apologize to my 15-year-old when I'm the macho man, I'm the head gorilla. It's my way. But when he got a hold of me, I was excited about doing it. Because if Daryl was, I don't know what happened to Daryl. God did something with Daryl. Thank the Lord. And, and I went in there and got on my knees and said, oh, baby, I know and she was rebelling. I mean, she was wearing all this black stuff, got the craziness, and I'm like, no, 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 that ain't gonna happen in my house. You, you gonna get out of my house with that stuff. But I caused it. When we take responsibility for our own sins, instead of blaming everybody else, it's their fault. They're the ones who did that to me. They're the ones who my parents raised me wrong. Oh, man, that's psychology, and that's full of junk. That's of the devil. If you'll take responsibility of your own. Like I told I said, I'm sorry I disciplined you out of anger all these years instead of love. If I'd have disciplined you out of love and care that I wanted to direct you in the right way, the, the, the rebellion wouldn't have come. But God has shown me the rebellion has come because I rose up and disciplined you out of anger. You, you, you made me mad. You frustrated me. Me, 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 me. It wasn't nothing about her. And so I apologized, knocked her right out of the seat. I mean, for two weeks, she didn't know how to talk to me. Because when you come to Jesus, whoo, and He allows, He breaks you, and that plain picture's broken, the light comes forth. You are what? A new creature in Christ. What did we open up with a while ago? Therefore, old things have passed on. All things have become new. You're something totally different, praise yeah. God. you got the light coming through you. You're a different man. You're not a gorilla no more. Yeah. Oh, I know they say we come from monkeys and gorillas, but sometimes I act like that. I don't believe that, but I did act that way sometimes. Praise God. At the close of this service, if you would like to make the Lord Jesus Christ your Savior, today is the day of salvation. If you're a Christian that's needing help, that you've been attacked by the enemy because he's angry right now, and he's attacking your mind, attacking your body, attacking your finances and everything around you, just come and give it to the Lord. Drop it at the foot of the cross. I promise you there's power in prayer. There's power in humbling yourself. Don't let that spiritual seatbelt hold you in the pew. I let that spiritual seatbelt hold me so long I turned gray before I repeat.